Hello there, wherever you are, let me greet you with the news that the early rain that we have at the National Stadium has since gone. We have lost one hour and 53 minutes, and that's due to heavy rainfall here at the National Stadium at Providence. But congratulations are in order for the ground staff led by Habib, who did a terrific job to ensure that play is going to start in another two minutes at, thir at 13 hours 30. The match has been reduced to 31 overs aside. If you can recall, 24 for the loss of four was the score when rain came. Guyana batting against Trinidad and Tobago. The players had to scamper out, uh, losing four wickets. Uh, the wickets of uh, Ravit, Fedrix, uh, Kush, C. Gobin, uh, and there is also Richard Ramdial and uh, Ethan Silas. Lamar C. Choran has looked the part. He's on seven despite facing 54 balls. And with him is Tameshwar Deunandan, who is yet to score. In the bowling department, Tyler Ramroop, two for five. Mikhail Ali, one for six. Jordan Julian, one for 12. They're the leading bowlers. Excellent bowling, two from Aiden Owen. Despite not picking up a wicket, as you can see, none for a one. So the Trinidad and Tobago on the 13 boys, they're making their way out in the middle, looking spanking in their red and black. If we can recall, they won the toss this morning and invited the boys in yellow and black from Guyana to take for a strike. Lamar Citron, like I said, is on seven. To make sure Dear Nandan is yet to score 24 for the loss of four. And we can briefly let you know exactly some of the changes to the playing conditions here this afternoon. Um, 31 overs, the match has been reduced to from 40. And the length of the interval is 10 minutes, uh, with the fourth session to end at 14.35. Overs for bowler, four of them can send down six, uh, while one can bowl seven. And uh, the match should be ended at 16 hours 56. In the commentary box, once again, is Sean Messiah. Hello to you, Sean. 24 for the loss of four, 14 overs remaining. Guyana must step up the tempo a little. Yes, good afternoon, Indijit. And uh, once again, we are back here at the stadium, and we'll yet to see what will be the changes or the instructions being given to these youngsters. And uh, saying good afternoon to those in the Trinidad and Tobago and in the Caribbean. First ball after the rain, rain stop play. Good delivery once again from Riyadh Khan. Starting well, just outside the line of the off stump, but Dave Nandan pushing forward. The pitch has played well. Excellent pitch so far. was nicely tucked into the onside, a little bit on the short length. Hadn't the power, maybe the ball came onto the bat a little bit quicker than Dave Nandan expected. Yes, and with this reduced over, we have 14 overs uh, more to go. And the Guyana would need to put a little more runs here on the board. Nicely tossed up there once again from Riyad Ali Khan. Started his first two overs, you know. Well, not Kali Khan, it was actually just get that cost him 12 runs. But this is Ali Khan's first over. He has looked the part like all the other youngsters from Trinidad and Tobago. Very tall, his left arm spin with 999 on his back. <laughs> And that's brilliantly knocked down at short backward square. It was a good looking shot all along the ground. And, and you know, Sean, if we can look back what transpired early, the first ball that was played in the air, a catch was taken at short extra cover. Other than that, all deliveries played by the batters went on the ground. And that is so good to see because um, that's what you want from these youngsters, keeping the ball as flat as ever on the ground, hardly hitting anything in the air. Final delivery coming up in over number 18, bowled by Riyad Ali Khan. Good delivery, another dot, 18 gone, it's 25 for the loss of four. 
Yes, so um, Cicharan, who's there from the start, would no doubt look to see if he can um, push on and even bat right through. You know, and Ghana will try to see it. We can't really predict what score they might look into have. Those instruments that you're seeing there, they call them piglets. The, the big ones, I think they call them the water hog. It's a super supper, actually. That's a technical name. So since the hog dropped these, they're piglets. They did a terrific job allowing the groundsmen to get the water off the field. This is Brian Harichoran will pick the bowling up from this end. Good contest so far, but at this stage, I think Trinidad and Tobago on the 13, very well winning the battle. 25 for 4, 18 gone. Yes, yes, they're rear in front, but the game is not over as yet, as we know. <laughs> <laughs> and you can say that again. Trinidad and Tobago, the land of hummingbirds. Beautiful country. So many trips we would have had to Trinidad and Tobago. Enjoy them all. Over number 19 begins. And, and you know, what, what's good about the spinners that we have seen so far, they're not afraid to toss the ball up. Look at that last delivery. The first one by Brian Harry Choran. Tossed a generous flight just outside the line of the off stump. And he has the height to do it well. well. That was on the full toss and nicely driven away down towards extra cover. A little bit of a chase by the fielder there. Can't prevent the single. And once again, it's good to see a youngster hitting all along the ground. That is good. And so far, they're um, rotating with, uh, for the last over on this one so far. You remember your time when you were 13 years old, 12 years old, 11 years old? Playing whole day in the jeet. Whole day we would play from 6 to 6, I would call it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whoa, well, that one is cannon into the off stump, taking the bales down. And Lamar Cicharan, he has to go. He's the youngest member of this um, team. He's just 11 years old. Look at that delivery. Once again, given generous flight, this is beautifully bold. Might have come off the top pad a little and then cannon into the stump, drawing him on the back foot. That's brilliant cricket, 26 for five. Yeah, there's a lot of bunks there by, the, by Harry Charan, using his height and nice flight and beating C. Charan there and getting through to this wicket. Yes, and once again, look at that, the green stand. Lots of Trinidad and Tobago supporters are in that part of the ground. There might be some Guyanese too. I don't know yes, really how I, to I, judge I, it. Mm -hmm. um, yes, some Guyanese are at the side. Some are celebrating. Some of them, they're just stunned. The scoreboard tells a story. And that's Citroën's father there you can see in the green. <laughs> ah. Always behind his son. That's nice to see. And this is what makes this level of tournaments essentially beneficial to the youngsters and cricket as a whole. You get the parents involved, what better guidance do you want than having mom and dad or relatives close to you? Yes, because at the break, you could have, um, some of the youngsters went taking a walk around the ground and they were chatting with their parents in the pavilion there. And that Your was boy, Riaz Latif, has come out in the middle. Yes, Riaz Latif. He's from transport? He's from transport. Came See. through the ranks, I would want to say experienced, you know, for this <laughs> level. <laughs> and wow, look at that four shot. Just right. getting, stretching right out, beating yeah. whatever spin is there. And looks very comfortable. You'll tell us a little yeah, bit more yeah. about Latif. He played a lot on the 13 Pierce cricket back then. And he even played earlier this year in the Demerara into county on the 15. Missed out on a selection for the Ghana team. No doubt looking forward for selection or, uh, next year or thereabout. Played in the under-19 club competition. Yes, 19 overs gone, 26 for 5. 
Yes. So Riaz has a lot of matches under his belt. I'm wondering to know if he is the son of the famous softball player. Yes, he is, Richard Latif. It's a cricketing family, so to speak. He has uh, three other brothers. Well, I understand. Latif, I, I understand. Latif. While little Riaz Latif was young, unborn, in the mommy tummies, that his dad used to go on the tummy and whisper, cricket, 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 cricket. <laughs> Well, the I rest want is to history so. now. <laughs> we want to believe so because he had another little brother named Rakim. And if you see, he was in, among the, the, in the trials as well. well th th those are good news that our youngsters are coming through. You can't go wrong arranging tournaments like these. And I guess this is going to pioneer other nations around the Caribbean. Not necessary, um, I heard you, I think John Ramsing was making the point this morning, a leeward or windwards, but some of the other islands as well, you know, playing as a team at this youth level, at this under 13 tournament. Mm -hmm. The interest is going to be tremendously good. I guess when these boys go back to their school, they're going to be heroes. They have represented their country. Yes, and the streaming here is, is, is very good that, you know, it's been able to broadcast throughout the Caribbean and even to the outer world so that the other countries, when they see this, you know, they will want to get into the mix of things to play in a lot of under 13 matches. And as I said before, the CWI, we should get it into the regional setup. Nicely pulled around down over mid-wicket and they will come back and complete to good-looking shot. For the second time, we've seen a, a ball hit in the air, but this one had enough clearing the inner field, and they're getting two runs, two good-looking runs. Yes, it was a calculated shot there uh, by Dio Dandan that yielded him two runs. And the streaming also helped in keeping records of, you know, the kinds of shots our players play. The ones that get them runs, like this one, down towards extra cover, and good run in between the wicket, too. You go back and look at the areas that you can correct, because you create videos. You, you, you have a, a data that you can always go back to. And here again, the Guyana Cricket Board must be commended, because this is part of their five-year strategic plan to stream these matches and inter-county matches as well. Oh, this is exceptional, good running. And you can see the urgency. They understand that the overs have been reduced to 31, 20 gone, 30 for the loss of five. Yes, and the streaming uh, in the Jeet will help the coaches as well. You know, they can have a look and see the youngsters in the middle because you've been practicing with them over and over at, your, at the club or at the various uh, venues. But you want to see them now in an actual match. And this is so good that you can sit now and you could even look back and see how they've been do doing in these matches. Yes, and FL Sport along with the Ghana Cricket Board has been doing a fantastic job with that streaming that you're talking about. So, and you, you know, I am very impressed with the control we have seen so far by all the bowlers. Gone, caught it first, slip the lone slip. Uh, Beating the flashing blade of Riaz Latif's bat, taking the edge, going through to the first slipper. It's now 30 for the loss of six. Let's watch. Uh, that, that one ball. came back to the right hand, uh, floated nicely, and that is what spinners do. You tantalize the batsman, give him, a, uh, he give him an opportunity to feel that he can go for the drive. Came back, the edge found, the catch taken.
30 for the loss of six. Yes, good crowd there by Harry Churan. It was enticing. It was inviting, and Riaz went for it. <laughs> so, good bowling here by Harry Churan. That peg back the Ghana team now, six wickets down. And it looks like the captain himself is coming to the crease, Brandon Henry. Can bat. Is he from, from Transport or is he from Maltino Sports Club? <laughs> he's, be <laughs> he's between both clubs. <laughs> between both clubs. Let's see, what's between Maltino's and Transport? There's a fence? There's a fence. Chain link fence. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I only hope if he scores a, a half century here, we don't have a court battle for ownership. No, 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 no. no. Not at all. I don't like courts. <laughs> <laughs> so Brandon Henry, he's a skipper. So he has to shoulder some responsibility here. Ramcharan, two for one so far. And just this one, just pulling back the length a little. And uh, Henry's a tall guy, got on the back foot. This one for the floated up. So you can see the thinking alone. Yes, and he has to adjust because he's a taller guy, a taller batsman. Getting the inner edge of his man, and he knows it. The youngster Brian Harry Charan brought smile across his face. It's amazing. When you're so young and success follows you, well, then smiles will lit up the face. Good looking drive, but has nothing for it. But looks good out in the middle. 21 gone, 30 for the loss of six. More from you, Sean. And then it will be the voice of John Ramsing. Yes, so Guyana here, uh, 30 for six after. 21 overs, another 10 overs to go. And uh, no doubt uh, the Ghana team will looking to see if they could get as close, I would say now, as close as possible to 50 and more runs. Um, so the captain is at the crease, is Brandon Henry. He is with uh, Tommy Shawar Dionandan, who is there for a while. He did five overs. And, um, And uh, I can give you a little insight about Brandon Henry in a while, but we're watching the tall bowler of Ali Khan. The new bat is Pearson. The new bat is, uh, oh, sorry, Henry, sorry. That's not. So let me um, say good afternoon to John Ramsing. Good afternoon, John. You had, I heard you had a good lunch. Had two lunches. It was a long break. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Yeah, the battle continues here. We're off the field for almost two and a half hours. <clears throat> One hour, 53 minutes lost to rain. Yeah, this is good controlled stuff so far from the Trinidad Tobago under 13 boys. Very much in control of proceedings. Six bowlers used and all very economical. In the air, who wants it? And that's an excellent running catch, running back. And that is a young man, Julian. It was tossed up nicely. And there was Tamishwar looking to go the aerial route. He got a little bit of height and not any distance at all. Nice flighty delivery, as you can see. And there was the fielder right in a short extra cover. Had to run back. And those look good when you take them. Good, run. good running catch there by Julian. And he dives and takes it just going over his head. Says, excellent catch there. Good work here by the Trinidadians. As Guyana struggling here with 30 for 7. But it's an under 13. You know. And um, they're looking, as I said before, John, to see how close they can get to that 50 mark. Do you and go on for 5? This is over number 22. And clearly, that catch is the play of the day. Yeah, John. Uh, very good catch. Yeah, good bowling here by Ali Khan. He so far picked up his uh, first wicket, second wicket. And we see the new batter is ready, who is moving, who's going to the crease. He's going to join his captain, in, uh, Brandon Henry, and the two of them will have to do some work here for the Guyana team. 
Red Heel number one on his back. Pint size. I'm sure he's going to pack a punch coming down low in the order. I think at number nine for this guy on the 13th side. Scorecard, Cicharan, seven. Fredericks, two. Silas, no score. Sigubin, two. Ramdeo, seven. Thomas Schwartz, and who just dismissed for five. We have Latif, one. So no one into double figures just yet. Durham is 31 over the side game. If the top order could not really get the ball away, I don't think the lower order will be able to do so. But this is on the 13. Pretty much everyone equal. Yeah, and the extras just stood at six. Just to tell you how economical uh, the youngsters are bowling. So that's the end of a successful over again. So Riyad Ali Khan picking up a wicket in his third over. 22 gone, 30 for 7. Well, John, I know they have uh, a youngster there yet to bat uh, in uh, Pearson. He can handle his bat. So you never know. You can see some, uh, a bit of um, runs being scored up when he comes in. So two wickets for Ramroop and Harit Charan. None for Owen with the new ball. But the other ball is supporting nicely. Ali, Julian, and Ali Khan. Over number 23 in progress now. So much better conditions now for cricket. We started with brilliant sunshine and we had a very dark period, literally. Nice flight again from Harry Charan. Do you see the wicket keeper taking off the bills? Very close to that off stump there, Messiah. There's a good bit of bowling here by Harry Charan, you know, having this Brandon going across the line, but it went through to the keeper and ripped the bills off, but his foot was grounded uh, in the crease. And John, I want to just say good afternoon to the listeners in Trinidad and Tobago. No doubt I know they're looking into the, um, on this game here on a Sunday afternoon, you know, uh, players as well in the USA, out in, right here in Guyana, out in Essequibo, in Borbis, saying good afternoon to you all. Lots of bottom hand to that shot. He's going to run across the boundary ropes. So Brandon Henry, the captain, getting off the mark in convincing fashion. Four more. Yes, um, John. When Brandon came to trials, like last year time, so you know, he said he was a he's a batsman, but at the time when he came, he didn't have any bat or pads or so. So I asked him to bowl, and from there on, his bowling was on, and his batting is on. And he made a seventy something in this in the trials. He has a mission on hand here, looking to set a good target for the opposition. He's captain. 34 for the loss of 7 and over number 23. Slow delivery, chipped in the air, but will not result in a wicket, but just a single. So 23 gone. Nice testing over coming to an end from Harry Chiran. 35 now for 7. Yes, um, a good bit of uh, batting there by Brandon hitting a 4 to get him off the mark. So he'll be hoping to cash in on these rest overs that... Uh, Remain, and no doubt the Trinidadians will be looking to see if they can um, bowl out the other team here this afternoon. But it's nice cool conditions after we had some rain. I did have a look, John, I did have a look at the Accu weather. I don't know how accurate it is. <laughs> and for the rest of the afternoon, we're seeing sun. Let's hope it stays that way. Well, Accu has been shortened from accurate. So let's hope it is accurate indeed. So a new bowler is going to be introduced from the, the far end, from the northern end of the ground. The regular media center end here at Providence. Ethan Ramcharan. Rispin. He starts on the line of the leg stump. Not a bad start. 
good start here for Ramcharan. With number one in his back, right? Number one as well. Here he comes. Trying to get under that one, Henry. But you see Ramcharan running in a straight approach to the wicket. Spinners tend to have an angled approach. He was coming straight. At one time it was looking like he's going a bit of medium. Yeah. But from the grip of the delivery the ball, this is his risk, risk spinner. So it looks like all, all the youngsters there can bowl. Mahendra Nagamoto had a similar type of action. Single, but hesitation, making it a little bit challenging. Appeal for Ronald, but Reddy has made it. Reddy so he's was quick through the air as well, Eaton. Yeah, Reddy, he was ready to run, but he had to run quick. And there's always that challenge as well when you see Reddy with shorter strides compared to his partner, as Captain Henry, with longer strides. So he wasn't certain if he was going to get there ready, so he had to really accelerate. Do you remember Mahendra Nagamutu with a whippy action? Yes, Mahendra Nagamutu, I remember him very well. Played for the West Indies as well, played for Guyana. And his brother was the keeper. Overgone, 24 completed, 36 for 7. So some, uh, is it 9? 7 overs remaining. Seven overs remaining, so uh, Brandon and Reddy will be looking to see, as I said before, John, hoping it's toward a six for seven. Can they get to 50? National fast bowler runs for Beaton. And friends. <laughs> so it's good to see some of the national players Coming out in support, I also saw former West Indies player as well, and Travis Dowlin. Yes, we're seeing you guys. Yes, pick up yourself. Is a new bowler on? Is Ramlal? Shan Ramtahal. Ram so the ring in the changes now. This is a very good position for the Trinidad to be on the 13th side to really bring in some new bowlers because they're in control. This is the 25th over of this innings. 31 allotted because of the rain. And we're seeing two new bowlers introducing consecutive overs. And no doubt what a, what a time to, you know, see the, the rest of players in your team to see what they, what they have up their string, what they can do. So as I was saying to um, Brother Indiji that, you know, this is the time when the coaches will have a look to see um, how well or how good the players um, can perform in the middle on a pitch, you know, rather than having them practice. And you're seeing them practicing every day and every afternoon. So this is the time now to look out and see what they can do. Nice quicker delivery. What I'm impressed with, with the bowlers, they're all coming and land in good areas immediately. You find a bowler, especially if you're playing your first game for your country, We'll be a bit nervous. we will be ragged, short and wide. But not with us on the 13th side from Trinidad Tobago. Yes, they look like they, they've been playing for a while. You know, at home, you don't know. But uh, you said they had rain as well. But they look a good bunch of uh, a unit, um, you know, playing together. As you said before, from the very start, too, the two fast bowlers in Aiden and, and Tyler, they were on spot. Ooh. Just clearing the feeler, but not by much. Chance for Ronald as well. Not hitting the woodwork. And Ramtahal not taking it cleanly. It's all happening here, but a single in the end. Oh, chipped in the air, just out of the reach. Oh, that feeler very short in that mid-wicket. Then a rifled return. Too much for the bowler. And you can sense a bit, a little urgency between the batters. Yeah, the meanwhile, the meanwhile, Reddy is off the mark with a single. 
This one is in the air. This is a big shot, the biggest we've seen for the day. And it goes straight into the hand of the fielder. And he takes it quite easily. And that's Ramcharan, Ethan Ramcharan, who just bowled his first over way down at mid wicket. And the ball did not go close to the boundary, he got a little bit of height and into the safe hands of Ramcharan. So wicket number eight going down now, 38 for eight. Yes, but um, John, you notice the trap was set because the previous batters, when they were batting, you had no one out of the 30 yard circle. And they sensed that the captain Brandon was hitting this ball when he came off the mark with a four. So they said, no, we got to set a man on the outside, on the mid-wicket boundary and Brandon hole out there. So Trinidad strikes once more. So eight wickets down so far. That's a very good catch. Reverse cup running in. And then might have slightly overrun. So he had to drop his anchor once he felt the ball in his hand, in his hands. So Captain Henry, after hitting that boundary, Dismissed for seven. seven. Joint top score so far with Sichiran. So the new batter is Rafael McKenzie. Quite a tall figure of Rafael McKenzie. With number four on his back. I used to wear the number four when he was playing. What was the significance? Carl Hooper used number four. So Carl was my next street neighbor in Campbellville. And I so idolized the man. I wanted to be every, do, do everything like him. Bat right arm, bowl right arm, drop catches. Everything like Carl Hooper. <laughs> and plus take those magnificent <laughs> ones. And Carl Hooper is known to taking 100 catches. Yeah, he doing, was doing some, some work yeah. in Australia in that uh, series. He's one of my idols as well, Carl Hooper. Yeah. Shea Hope is actually wearing the number four now. And I had the privilege of speaking to Shea Hope, and I asked him if he knows the history of number four in the Western East Colors. At that time, he had no knowledge. This is over number 26 in progress now. Ram Tahal continues. This is his second over. Sorry, Ram Charan. Eaton. Yeah, so Shea Hope now. Uh, with that number four on his back. There was also Horschel Gibbs, who used to be using number four. So we're in the 26th over. 38 for eight. So the ring of feeders on the offside now, realizing that Reddy will not be able to necessarily hit over the infield, so they're trying to keep him in check, preventing from adding to 38. And a good bowling there by Ethan Ramcharan. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that this on the 13th side will have spent some time in the National Cricket Center at Kuva before coming to Guyana. Yes, you can, you can clearly see that, you know, you, you would, you, from the setup and the bowling and how they're pitching the ball, how they're feeling, how they're catching, you know, you can see them being together for some time, you know, and it's good to see that um, they're executing and executing well. Some of them as well, it might have been from the Samuel Badri Cricket Foundation and the Brian Lyre Cricket Academy. Over 26 gone. 38 for eight. There's also the Darren Ganga Cricket Foundation. Is the Samuel Badri Cricket Academy as well? Must get that right. So five overs to go. The guy on the 13 sent in by the Trinidad to be on the 13. So the last five overs coming up, um, Messiah, two wickets in hand for Guyana. I think they will be looking at a target of at least 50. Yes, they will hope to see if they could get uh, to 50 or even more because, as I said before, they're still piercing to bat, and we'll see uh, how it goes from here. So more words from John Ramsing, and then we'll have uh, Indajit. Start of over number 27, and a tall figure of Mackenzie. 
receives his first ball in the lineup of some pint size guys and you see a tall figure of McKenzie you're already thinking he is a fast bowler ah that's very wide of the leg stump and he loses the keeper as well it's going to run down towards fine leg and it's going to cross the ropes now four runs and that will help Ghana on the 13th cause 42 now and 43 now for the loss of eight as we welcome back in the JIT. Thank you, John. And uh, that delivery was the force, actually, that was straight down the lakeside and called a wide, if I can recall. Uh, and uh, were, were there other whites? Well, there were, well, were a few of them, but not many. So just one of those deliveries that straight down the lakeside. Maybe just looking to put a little bit more energy into that one. But generally, Trinidad and Tobago bowling has been real good. Oh, exaggerated turn there from Ramtahal. Number 74 on his back, just like still on the Rhine with number 74. Sharp turn. Yes, certainly sharp turn and kept low as well. His line was much better too. He actually rolled his wrist on that one. Let's have a look at his, look at his wrist action. It came off the pad. Look at. Tried to bowl the arm ball there. Came off the pad and went into the hands of the field at first slip. In the air. What a smart diving catch again. Padre it is. Just like his uncle with number 77 on his back. And wicket number nine going down. And if you can put the catchers in the wickets column, he deserved to be there. That really was a smart catch. Well done. Certainly, that was a fabulous catch indeed by little Badgery. Uh, he had a presence of mind. The ball was falling away from him. He went towards his left and came up with a good catch, uh, held it nicely, wrapped the fingers around it. Uh, and uh, Trinidad and Tobago youngsters, they're extremely happy out in the middle. And why not? Uh, because Mackenzie has been dislodged without scoring 43 for the loss of nine. Earlier, I did say that young Badri was the son of Samuel Badri, and you called it right, John. He is the nephew. I guess Sammy is not going to vex with me. While not biological, it's actually his son. That's his nephew. Yeah. So the last batter is making his way into the middle for the Guyana on the 13s. Darius Parson. The order of the day now must be to battle the rest of the overs. Yes, and how many overs to go from this one? Three overs and two balls remaining for that 31? Four. If you look at that catch again, it was hit in the air. Not timing it well, not good connection. But he timed his jump very well. He was flying in the <laughs> air. And that is a little bit better than what we saw Julian did. So they're trying to outdo each other with catching, and it shows of their confidence. Yes, and I like what I have seen so far. I think while Guyana has struggled to put runs on the board, we have seen things that you know the coaches can work with. Big appeal given. And we just mentioned that the order of the day should be to watch out the rest of the overs, but that was not to be. Shan Ramtahal cleaning up the Guyana innings. The last batter to go, leg before. That's Darius Parson, the new batter. Leg before, without scoring, 43 all out. Your thoughts on that decision? Well, that was hit on the knee roll. He was playing across the line. And in the mind of umpire Nan Kumar Shiv Sankar, that would have gone on to hit the leg stump. Might have been, maybe going down, could it have been for height? He was stretching forward, taking on the top of the pad there. But the umpire has made his decision, John. While the scoreboard, 43 all out of 26.5 overs, does not suggest a real competitive total, a struggle for the Guyanese batters, I humbly suggest that I've li I like what I've seen so far, especially from the Trinidad and Tobago bowling department. Who top score for Guyana? Three guys scoring seven apiece. And look at that bowling department. 
magnificent wicket taking deliveries and very economical indeed two wickets apiece for well that just jumped away from me a little uh, Mikhail Ali one for six Julian one for twelve Riyad Ali Khan one for five Haricharan two for six Ramcharan none for one from two overs three for seven from Sean Ramtahal the pick of the bowlers well, the two wickets you mentioned was Tyler Ramlo with a new ball two for five from five overs including three maidens really good effort from the Trinidad Tobago on the 13s with the ball 43 all out but the Ghana on the 13s batted 26 almost 27 overs and 40 on the 13th side you must say that that is a good effort in the end yes exactly I mean you do not expect tons and tons of runs at this level what you want to see are the basic ingredients you know you want your bowlers to be bowling line and length to wicket to wicket and more than often they did that Trinidad and Tobago we've seen in part some brilliance from the Guyana batters um, they've shown good techniques we haven't seen real slug we saw um, I think it was Henry he went was looking to go high over mid wicket for a six hold out on the boundary other than that uh, you know I think it was a very very good display Despite its 43, you never know what can happen. What about the catching of Trinidad and Tobago? Man, I tell you, it was absolutely splendid. You know what this says, John? Um, I haven't seen the Guyanese in the field as yet. But Trinidad and Tobago, their story out in the middle says that the coaches, whoever worked with them, did a terrific job. Because they had all the basics going for catches. Anticipation level excellent their judgment excellent as well so that's the story the guy on the 13s asked the bat first for the three all out it means that Trinidad Tobago on the 13s will need to get 44 from a maximum 31 overs we'll take a quick break when we come back we'll have the run chase
So welcome back to Providence. We're about to see the run chase here in this historic Guyana on the 13 versus Renato Big on the 13 encounter. The first of four matches in the bilateral Goodwill series bringing together two cricketing rivals. Ghana hosting and visiting Trinidad and Tobago very much at home, enjoying the first part of the exchanges. Ghana on the 13 acts the bat first 43, all out in 26.5 overs. It means that with Duckworth Lewis and Stern method being utilized, the target is also 43. Quite strange in cricket, but with Duckworth Lewis and Stern, Nothing is really strange anymore. My name is John Ram saying welcome back to the broadcast alongside Indrajit Prasad. We're pleased to bring you the first part of this innings. Sean Masai, our presenter. We have a special guest with us here today in this first match. But Indrajit, a 4 3 to get from 31 overs should be, and I said should be, as the operative words, a walk in the park for the Toronto Big on the 13s. Oh, well, you never know. This is cricket. It could be an easy victory for them, a few wickets. It could be a struggle for them. You'll never know. But they look a very good bunch of young cricketers, and they will have to contend with Mackenzie, who's going to start the bowling from the northern end of the ground. We shall see. Starting the batting for the visiting Trinidad Tobago on the 13. Shan Ramtahal is, is on strike. Uh, that's good bounce, good pace as well from McKenzie. And I did say, from the looks of him when he was batting, he is one of the fast bowlers. And he is starting with the new ball. Good bounce on Curry. So along with Shan Ramtahal, the captain, Zachariah Mohammed, opening the batting today. Yes, and not a bad first delivery. The intention was good. Just want to ruffle the batsman a little, but was a little bit off target we we'll love to get it straight. Let's see what this next delivery presents. Quite similar. Wider of the mark this time. And Umpai Omarat says it's uh, wide. So trying to be on the 13, they're off and running. 43, the victory target. One wiped off already in the form of extras. When the Toronto Big on the 13 were bowling, just 11 extras, of which two wides went into the boundaries for four. So they yes. were very economical in that department as well. Of the mark, better piece of feeling, could have seen the batters in trouble, but squeeze that one down to just maybe a gully region and took off for a single. So he's off the mark. Ram Tahal, it's two without loss. And John, that was very good technique shown by Sean Ram Tahal. Rising up on the toes and opening the face, keeping the ball down and getting it away where he wanted it. So he's handled the short pitch delivery very well so far. Of the outer part of the bat, we go down towards the third man and into the boundary. So the boundary coming very early in the innings for Trinidad Tobago. That was just too wide again from McKenzie. Yes, what McKenzie is doing here, just let us look at this delivery. Looking for the extra pace and over pitching this time. It was almost on the half volley, but the batter did well. Opening the face at the last moment, kept it all along the ground, gets a boundary down towards fine third man. That's the first ball. For Mohammed, and he's off the mark. Captain Ramdi Hall, well, Vice Captain Ramdi Hall, at first slip, but a very wide first slip. Waiting for that edge, but Mackenzie, uh, not just a bit too short and wide at the moment, not threatening the outside edge. Yes, he lacks control. Just hold it back a little. And here is where his captain comes in. You know, Henry should have been calling him a little. He said, just cool it down a little, guy. You're straying. The runs is not too much, just 43. You know, and there's so many overs to do it. Just has to just recuperate a little. Strive for line and length at this level. It's essential. This one is tucked off. 
the legs. It was on the line with Lexum this time, McKenzie. And there's the batter getting into position early, just working him off the hips. And that was nicely played again. Good technique, a short delivery on the body, and he's not afraid to get the body inside that line and knowing that the upper part was going away from it. So no danger there for him, and he rolled the wrist nicely, controlled shot down towards uh, um, backward square and picking up a single in the process. Look at the batting stance of Ram Tahal. Quite unorthodox, the way he's holding the bat. The bat perhaps facing a mid-wicket area, that face. Oh, very good delivery. Good end to the over. Ball was on the line of the body and rising. And Ramtal handling it very well. But he was tested. Yes, tested indeed. Good looking delivery. The first over gone. Seven without loss in quest for 43. That's what he make in the stands of Ramtahal. I like it. Very balanced. He looks a batsman. When you see him there, and what it does, uh, you know, it gives him an opportunity to look carefully at the bowler arm. He's a tall guy, and as he hit that crease there and delivers, he's in a good position to judge it. That's the reason why he was able to play that short lifting delivery. Take it from somewhere around the chest area, the upper chest, and played it down into the pitch. Good technique, um, good stance, I like it. And once he's comfortable at this age with that stance, that's the way you go. So Darius Parson is going to share the new ball with McKenzie. He's going to be running from the southern end of the ground. There's no breeze here, but if there were, if there were any breeze, he'll have been running into that breeze. A little man, number three on his back. There's a slip in play for him. Regulation field, defensive field. Backward point, point, cover, mid, off. Chance for a run out, wrong end. We'll get an extra run. So not feeling very cleanly as yet. Umpire looks as if he's going to send back <laughs> Ram to Hall. And I wonder why. Um, I'm not too certain exactly what happened. He, was he saying that there was a fielder? inside of a position where he should not have been. I'm not too certain. Well, the ball came off the batsman after y the yes. return came in. And they went for the second. Nothing is wrong with that in, this, in the laws of cricket. But uh, usually you find in the spirit of cricket, the batters themselves decide not to go. Not feel it cleanly down the leg side by the wicket keeper. Some work for McKenzie. So wides now. So it's all happening here at Providence. Yes, and the little wicket keeper there, Dale Nandan, did not do the basic. So I guess the coaches are watching him. He came across nicely, but didn't go down. Therein lies the problem, and allowing the ball to go by, they got the single. So Darius rushing the batters. Darius Parson. This is the delivery before. So it was played into the onside, took off for a quick single, and ball hit the batter. And then he was caught through for the second. But umpire denied that second run. Yes. And the previous delivery here, just beating the slip to the left. Could have been a little bit more alert there. Took some time. Um, was on bended knees and allowing the, the ball to go by. And they collected two more good-looking runs. So Trinidad and Tobago, actually, their under-13 team is running away with this one. Uh, short ball and misfielding again. And they'll allow the batters to come back for the second, looking for the third. And they're going to chance the arm. So this is good running. Zachariah Mohammed played into, into the onside. It was a short ball to start with. But bit of feeling. Uh, and John, if we may compare 
the feeling of both teams here, Trinidad and Tobago under 13 and Guyana under 13. Trinidad and Tobago, they were excellent in the field. The ground feeling, they're catching. And right now we're seeing, you know, the Guyana ground feeling um, has been exposed a little. They're not getting the body behind the ball. And it has cost them runs. Citroen was guilty of not feeling clean in that occasion. So Zachariah Mohammed into double figures. The first batter of the day to be into double figures. As Parson ends the second over with a short ball through midwicket. The chase is on. I think Trinidad Tobago on the 13s looking skyward. Do not want the skies to open again. And two overs gone. 17 without loss. So they're trying to up their run rate with every over. So Darius Parsons finishing his first over, none for 10. Rafael McKenzie, one over, none for seven. The two bowlers used so far. So I rather suspect that both bowlers will not be given long spells. We'd want to expose some of the other bowlers, not only to break this partnership, but also to get in other bowlers. Let's see what they can do. We'll see McKenzie marking his run up again. So he's going to be given a next, a next over from the northern end of the ground. In overcast conditions, but just not using the overhead conditions and the conditions in front of them so far. I want to say good afternoon to Ian Bascom, who's just joined us. Good afternoon to the wonderful listening public. And we're here at Providence, here in Guyana. And at the top of his mark is McKenzie. Oh, flicked away nicely. So runs again for Mohammed. He's going to go into the boundary. That's now his second boundary. He's now on to 15. And it's trying to be on the 13th side, looking to get 43 to win. Already 21 without loss. That was a good shot. Yeah, this is a very attractive looking shot. And that's the theme with these Trinidadian batsmen this afternoon. They're looking very good. They're very composed, and they're very technically accurate. So Ian, you're from the school system. You've been working with the kiddies pretty much all of your life. I guess it gives you great, great pleasure to see on the 13 cricket being played at this level, national level. Yes, it's, it's, it's really good. I've been working with the youths in the Safai area. Yeah, in the Safai area. And there are a lot of talented Guyanese, and we're glad that this initiative between the two boards, the Trinidadian and the Guyanese board, allows our younger persons to go out and to harness their talent. West Indies cricket really needs this, and it has to start from the grassroots level. And this is a very, very good initiative, and it must be applauded. So Zachariah Mohammed on 15. Good defensive technique. Number seven on his back reminds me of Mahendra Singh Dhoni. <laughs> I was talking off air to the other commentator, Indijit. And um, these young men, especially number seven, Yash Paul, the Indian under 19 captain, when I look at them, their technique matches those Indians. And they're getting neatly and appropriately into the line. They're covering it. They're standing up tall. They're getting over the bunks. Short ball pulled away again. More runs for the captain of the strand on the, uh, on the 13th side. And he races away now to 19. And a total 25 without loss. Beautiful again. You see there getting into line, getting on top of the bunks. And just rotating and pivoting his body. Playing it beautifully there on the ground into the leg side. That's a very, very good shot. And the sun coming out now. Brightening up here at Providence. No doubt the spectators in the ground being treated to a nice batting display. Three boundaries from just 11 balls so far. Putting a lot of weight on his bat. Right-handed. Mohammed. this time he goes through the offside. 
little bit of misfeeling from Sigobin, but not allowing the ball to go past him. Single taken easily. Yeah. It's good that they're aware, and I see they're batting in partnerships. Their calling is clear. Their communication is very good. And that's something that we need in West Indies cricket. We looked at the last innings. There were a few runouts, bad calls. And it's very good that these young Trinidadians are getting it right, and it could be copied across the Caribbean. Oh, just winding up the batter a little bit. But enough connection to get it down to short. Third man for a single. End of three overs. 27 without loss. Captain Mohammed is on 20. Ramtahal on four. Yeah, very good start. Very good start by the Trinidadians here. The Guyanese. There, you, I sense a bit of nervousness in the opening bowlers. You'll get that, especially at this young age. But I would just like to like them to know that they need to bowl the right lines and the lengths. They need to get the ball into the good areas. Because that's one thing that the Trinidadians did very well. They bowled in the good areas and they bowled in partnerships. And we're just looking to see if the Guyanese will factor that in and get it right. So Brandon Henry, the captain, is going to bring himself into the attack, replacing Darius Parson, who sent down one over for 10 runs. And so both of the openers, in terms of the Guyana on the 13 bowlers, not getting it right. Mackenzie, two overs, none for 17. So Brandon Henry from Malty Nose right here in Georgetown. And according to our co-commentator, Messiah, also of transport, but I suspect what happens. He plays at multi nose, but because of that tarmac at transport club, he would go across there to play some tape ball when it's raining. So that's why Transport Sports Club want to claim him a little bit. So let's see what Henry is going to do. He's bowling left arm, he's coming round the wicket. And starts with a dot. Also with number seven on his back. Well, that's a famous number, Cristiano Ronaldo. Maybe that's a fan. He's a fan of it. <laughs> Marlon Samuels of the West Indies wore that number. That's correct. Very quick and full delivery from Henry. Yes, and I like it. It's, it's the containing start. I wonder as he goes on, he gets a little more confidence. We're looking for him to give the ball a little more air and get some more purchase. The Trinidadians did that well. It was a bit short on this occasion, and it's cut away. And we see a bit more purpose in the running, like you mentioned. While Guyana were batting, there were opportunities for singles, for quick singles, and they did not take those chances. But we see now Ram Tahal and Mohammed, the openers for Trinidad and Tobago, taking those chances and converting half runs into one. And that's correct. That's the way forward. Nice de defensive technique as well. And the little, a little bit of um, air given there by Henry. And he'll be encouraged to do that. You see, you're going to bring out the skill sets in the Trinidadians there. Good bowling. So the Goodwill Series will continue on Tuesday with the next match. It's a four-match series. So after today, tomorrow is a break. Tuesday will be back here from 10 a.m. Eastern Caribbean time, Guyana and Trinidad Tobago time for match number two. So Henry finishes a very good opening over. Just a single conceded. And after three overs, 28 without loss, the target, 43. Very good over by Henry. I saw towards the end of it, he's giving the ball a little more air, and he'll be encouraged to do that. He looks more attacking. Um, he's causing the Trinidadians to think and to challenge the technique when he gives that a little more air. We're looking for the spinners in the Caribbean to just encourage them to get the flight and to challenge the batsman. Family members coming out to support their young ones, and that is very important. I was making a point earlier, if there are no neutral spectators, at least parents and relatives of these players will be out. They have not disappointed us so far. 
And Ustan Hill, who's on camera, is looking at that KFC box that is next to that young lady. That's why he's picking up the crowd. So this is over number five. It's going to be bowled by Riaz Latif. His father is in the, the green stand. He starts outside the off stump. Another leggy. Another leggy. Started a bit wide there, but you'll expect that. Yeah, much closer this time. Much better. Even the sun is coming out for him. So the leg spin is the most difficult art. The wrist spin. Here he is, just showing good control so far. Cut away, straight to the feeler, but single taken. So the feeler hanging back, right back on the 30 yard circle. Because of that, the batters felt it was enough time for them to go through for a single. Yes, and Ghana's feeling has improved over the last few overs. Maybe the nervousness is settling down, and that's good to see. Oh, nice flight to delivery. Push firmly to Silas at mid-off, but cannot prevent the single. And I think that is why the Trinidad Tobago on the 13th side won the toss and opted to bowl first. They wanted to get that nervous energy out of them. They wanted to see what the conditions will be in front of them. And they've seen how the pitch has been playing, and now they're playing freely. That's correct, John. And that's also a testament to good management, good planning, good thinking in the camp. It was a good toss to win this morning. In very good conditions for batting. Started in good sunshine. Then the rains came. So Latif with his leg breaks. I'm not threatening so far. Much better on the line of the stumps at this time. And there we see Shan Ram Tahal, who looked very good in his innings, being beaten for pace in and in flight. So the end of five overs, 30 without loss. Yes, that's a very good over by Latif. As we saw, he gave a little air. He got some drift there. That's very nice. And let's see what continues. You see the Guyanese getting into their positions as we get ready for the start of the sixth over. So the low, slow bowlers keeping things just a bit quiet as opposed to the three overs that were sent down by the seamers. Rafael McKenzie, two overs, none for 17. Darius Parson, one over, none for 10. So three overs of seam, 27 runs came from that. And two overs of spin, just three runs. Oh, that's a very good delivery. Beats the outside edge. Big appeal, but not out says umpire. Shiv Sankar. That is beautifully bowled by Henry. Just talking about the use of air, bringing the batsman forward, trying to get it above the eye line. That's well bowled by Henry. Uh, trying the batsman forward. He had to play that one yes. this very, time. Very well bowled by Henry. Very well bowled. And we're noticing that the Guyanese feelers are poised. The Guyanese feelers are encouraging their captain on. That's very good. The sensing that he will be the one to get this breakthrough. Something is about to give. Oh. Too full this time, but good feeling to his own bowling. I guess with the format of the Goodwill series with the off days in between matches. It presents opportunities for the visiting Trinidad Tobago side to go around Guyana, have a look to see what's happening in this magnificent country of ours. I'm sure they'll be taking a trip across at least the Demerara River to see what a real river is. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, John. There's so much to explore and see in Guyana. There's so much. A little break. 
So 4-3 to three is the target. Just 13 runs away from that. At a required run rate of a half of a run per over. This one beats the field at slip. They're looking for the second to come back and complete the second run. It's a little bit of misfeeling, not, trying, not getting the ball back in time or in a hurry to the wicket keeper. And that little bit of indecision allowed Ramtahala Mohammed to complete the second run. So they've turned half of a run into two. That's good running. At the end of six overs, Sunan Tobago looking to get 100, sorry, looking to get 4 to 3 to win. They are 32 without loss. Patriotic John comes there. He has more runs to Trinidad to get. But again, as we see here, very good from Trinidad and Tobago. I like the positiveness in their play, the confident calling, the trust that they have with, with the batsmen. And it's a keen battle right now. The Guyanese are bowling some good line and length. But we'll see if they could cause any or get any breakthroughs in this over. So look at the, the worm, the worms. That blue worm certainly in, in a very positive direction. As we see the umpire as well signaling end of the first power play. Latif continues. Chance for Ronald and non-strikers in. Direct hit, but he's made it back. So a little bit of indecision this time between Ramta Hall and his captain, Mohammed. Yeah, the first I tried to highlight was the first piece of bad calling that we've seen from the partnership. What a leg spinner, wrist spinner, Latif. To the right handers will be tempting them outside that off stump, but need to be a bit closer, force them into, into playing. Oh, that's a very good delivery. This, that's what I was speaking of. Yes, yeah, getting yeah, much yeah. closer to the bat. Yes, and that's the importance of bowling the ball, giving it air bowling in those good areas of fuller lengths, cause the batsman to play. And that's the best way you'll get the wickets. You have to let the batsman play at the ball. You need to take the batsman out of the comfort zone. And we have that problem here at West Indies. We bowl too short and we miss our lengths. It's very good bowling by Lati so far in this over. Latif into his second over. Today in Win Windies women's cricket, West Indies women will be playing England women in the first of five T20 internationals. That's going to be played at the Sir Vivian Richards Cricket Stadium in Antigua. So the West Indies, they have named a 14-member squad for the first two T20s today in Antigua. And then it will shift on Tuesday to uh, Barbados, where the remainder of the series will be played. Good over again from Latif. A maiden from him. So seven overs gone, 32 without loss. Nice bowling. Very good bowling. And the team continues. The slower bowling on this track. It's reaping rewards. It's just unfortunate Guyana has prepared such a low score. It would have been very interesting to see a score possibly over 50, more to 100. It would have been more competitive. But I like the look of Henry and Latif. I don't know what you think, John, but Henry gives me a bit of Virasami Pramal vibes with how he bowls. And he gives it a little air just like Pramal. Very good bowler for Gan in the future. Or maybe it's a young Neil Magara with more air. Henry starts his third over. So now we're his women's squad. They've made some adjustments to the team that lost in the three match 50 over series. Here in Matthews, captain, Shemin Campbell, the Guyanese is vice captain, Alia Allen, Afi Fletcher, Cherry Ann Fraser, Shabika Gajnabi, Shanita Grimman, Chanel Henry, Trishan Holder, Janaba Joseph, Kaisia Knight, Karishma Ramhara, Kaisia Schultz, and Rashado Williams. A nice, good delivery, drawing the bat out of his crease. And for once, we've seen Zachariah Mohammed looking a bit uncomfortable. Yes, and Henry continues the good bowling. Mm -hmm. 
Looking for a single was sent back. So the Western is with inside. They're plagued by injuries. But they've brought in Janaba Joseph, the young Trinidad Tobago player, and Trishan Holder, the young Barbadian. They were just recently part of that on the 19 tour to India. And they're in Antigua preparing for the under 19 World Cup. In the air, taken. So wicket number one going down. Mackenzie takes a very simple catch. And it is the fall of Zachariah Mohammed, who looks so composed. 23 from 26 balls with three boundaries. And a Trinidad Tobago on the 13, losing the captain in over number eight. It's 32 for one. Yeah. No, that's, that's the, pr the pressure being played there. Henry was bowling in good line and lengths. And the young man just tried something a little different, falling over and offering the chance there to mid-wicket. So, very good wicket for Guyana. And it's very nice for your moral too to get a wicket. Yeah. That's very good for these youngsters. You don't want to be going there wicketless in a chase. So that's very good for them. And it's very good for Henry as well. Yeah, you were saying that Henry would, was going to be the one to give you the breakthrough. He did. But... Mohammed caught in a tangle, literally. And he played the ball off the back of the bat, and it went into the air. Two feeders were getting close to it. But in the end, it was McKenzie who held on. So Henry getting the breakthrough. 23 from 27 balls, three fours. So I think he has done enough to get his side over the ropes today. But it would be a boost of confidence for Ghana to get a wicket. It's important. It's important that these young Guyanese spinners continue to put their foot forward. Get another one. It does well for your confidence, for your morale, especially heading into the next game. Next game, like you said, is going to be on Tuesday. And the West Indies women's did start today. First game set for 6 p.m. On Wednesday will be the second. I did say Tuesday, but it's going to be on Wednesday. At the Kensington Oval in Barbados. It's a five-match T20 series. Sunday, Wednesday, next Saturday, then Sunday, then Thursday. West Indies were badly beaten by England in those three matches. So the new batter is Tyler Ramroop. He's left-handed. He's going to receive immediately from Brandon Henry. So Henry changing his line of attack as well. He's going to be going over the wicket. Just too wide, no shot offered, but they've gone for a run. By signal by umpire Shiv Sankar, and that's the end of eight overs. A successful over for Brandon Henry and Guyana coming to an end, 33 for, lo for loss of one. Yes, good over by Henry. So far, he's bowled three overs, three runs, one wicket, the pick of the bowlers. And Latif as well, bowling good in tandem with him, two overs, two runs, no wicket. Makes you consider Guyana opening with some slower bowling on this pitch. Or maybe mixing it up. We've seen the Bangladeshis do that before in the Caribbean, opening with spinners to test Caribbean batsmen. But it's a developmental series. And we want to see the fast bowlers getting an opportunity. The lone stand in that, the lone spectator in that stand, the venue operations center just in the front. Just having a look at his phone to make sure that his signal is clear. He's following the action. So you want to have an opportunity for the seamers to come in to effect as well. It's developmental, like I said. Yeah, that's true. So Latif is going to continue. Now he's into his third over. He has shown good control, young Latif. Yes, very good. He, he reminds me a bit of Anil Kumble, the Indian leg spinner. Doesn't spin the ball a lot, but bolts in good areas has very good variations from similar release points, and that's very good. Hoffman's right up into the block hole. So 10 runs away from victory, but a little bit of a slow passage of play. And this ever, is very good for the Guyanese. Yeah, ever since the introduction of spin. Up, just to slow it up, build up the confidence, keep the interest in the game, Keep the feelers interested. This is very good by Gael. Yeah, good use of his feet this time, Ramroop. He's going to get off the mark. He's finding the gap just to the right of the field at mid-off. 
not afraid to get down to tra the track, do a little bit of dancing. It's very good from these young batsmen, something that we haven't seen a lot, use of the feet. Very good this afternoon to see that. Latif throwing the ball up, giving a generous flight. Not a lot of batsmen like to see that. His father is quite a competitive cricketer. He used to play a lot of win ball. He went on to T ball, plays hard ball as well for the MYO in the inter Jamaat tournaments but he has made his name in a softball arena where he's known as Mr. Cricketer Mr. Cricket so two more this time to Ram Tahal Richard Latif father of Riaz Latif well his yeah. son is doing well maybe the son's gonna take over the hardball call and him it, Mr. Hardball Cricket and then there's Riyad Latif the, he, also, he also was like spin He's been playing at a higher level on the 17. So we see the family generation. That's very good to see. Yeah. Very, very good to see to redefine and get back the art of cricket. That one went through with the arm. And that's the end of nine overs. Latif completing three overs. None for five. 36 for the loss of one. It's very good from Ghana so far, bringing themselves back in the game, reducing this run rate of three. That was accelerating at very much at the start of the game. They're getting more composed. We see them getting less nervous at the crease with their bowling. They're hitting the lines and links far better than they were before. It's very good from Ghana, they're very improved. So the, the light has improved, the natural light. We don't need the artificial lights, but they're here. We've been here for a long time at Providence. I remember I was one of the first persons to really express my gratitude for lights being installed at Providence many, many years ago. I used to enjoy my nightlife, so I want to cricket at night as well. Henry to continue. A nice form push to extra cover. Latif is in the way. Very well bowled by Henry. Very well bowled. After the start that the Trinidad Tobago on a 13 had when they were batting, when they started their innings, 27 from three overs, we felt that it was going to be over very quickly. But in came Henry and Latif, and they've put the brakes on the scoring. Yes, it shows something that's very important. Bowling partnerships. It's something that we miss a lot in international cricket, regional cricket, West Indian cricket. I love the bowling partnerships. I mean, there's a variety too. We have the left arm and the leg spin. So a lot of the balls that are pitched outside the off stump and a few down the leg side, not called wide, is what we, are grown, we have grown accustomed to because the umpires were asked to use their discretion. This one is not a quick single. So the umpires are very lenient in giving balls that are what we are accustomed to seeing wide, as wides. And that's okay. Since we're in the developmental stages, one yeah. and two, it's goodwill. So they'll learn and they'll work together. Nice form push again, and not a single. Chance for an overthrow. As Henry himself looking to fan the ball back onto the non-striker's stumps, it missed the woodwork and it went away down towards mid-on for an extra run. So that's the end of 10 overs. And this run chase is just about coming to an end. 43 is the target. 10 gone. 39 for the loss of one. 39 for one after 10 overs. A bit of cheeky feeling attempted there by Henry at the end of the over. But we expected that. You know, the youngsters these days, they're there and they're gonna apply their smarts in different ways. And that's good to see. Good game today.
It's sad that the sun is coming out now. Would have liked to have been a bit out earlier when the battle was going on. But a very good game so far. We've seen a lot of the fundamentals here today are in good shape for both teams. And that will go well for this Goodwill tournament. So Latif is out of the attack. Three of us, one made none for five. And he's replaced by Richard Ramdehal, the vice captain of this guy on the 13th side. So Ramdehal from the Rosal Kanji Sports Club. Going from the far end, the northern end of the ground. And he's continuing the theme of good lines, good lengths. Very good from Ramdehal. So far, let's see how he continues. Very steady in holding that ball, a bit tight, high action. And he's cramping the batsman for room, something that the batsman wouldn't like when the force come to the crease. Oh, that's a quick one down the leg side, beats the keeper as well, and it's going to run down into the boundary, and that will be the end of the match. But the guy on the 13th side, they've gotten this match out of the way. It is... What I would say, the nervous match. They've gotten their nerves out of their stomachs and we're hoping for an improved performance in the next game. But it was a well-played game on the flip side of that by Trinidad Tobago on the 13, winning this match quite comfortably by nine wickets. Yeah, it was impressive batting by Trinidad and Tobago. Their team looks organized. The coaching, the bowling performance must be applauded this morning. For 13-year-olds to have that line and length, bowling in these conditions, they did well. Ram Tahal bowled well, and he also batted and contributed as well. That's something good to see. Guyana, towards the end, they overcame their nervousness, and they bowled fairly well. But again, the total was too small. We're looking for a better batting performance in the next game. So that's the end of the game. 43 for the loss of one. Trying to big on the 13s, winning by... Nine wickets with lots of time in the bag. Ram Tahar, like you mentioned, 10 not out from 24 balls. And Tyler Ramroop with him, 2 from 12, bringing it home. But it was set up nicely with the bat by Captain Zachariah Mohammed, the lone batter to be dismissed. Caught by Mackenzie off the bowling of Henry for 23 from 27 balls with three boundaries. And the Guyana on the 30s not helping themselves, leaking some eight extras, one by, four leg buys, three wides. And in the end, convincing victory by nine wickets. The next match, like I said, is going to be played on Tuesday right here at the Guyana National Stadium. 10 a.m. start, weather permitting, all things being equal. And that's a batting card. We can also look at the bowling. The bowling of the, of the Guyana on the 13s. Rafael McKenzie and Darius Parson started very poorly with the new ball. Leaked a lot of runs, but Henry and Latif came, pulled things back. Henry eventually picking up the lone wicket. Four overs, one for six. And Ramdial leaking wise in the, the, his first over. And the game ending very quickly in the 11th over. So 20 overs and three balls remaining in the contest. And I think if the Trinidad Tobago on the 13th bat at first, we would have seen lots, lots more runs being scored. Yes, we would have seen that. We would have seen... A uh, more aggressive attempt by Guyana in their bowling and batting. But all in all, a good game. The fast bowlers are encouraged to start their work, better lines and lengths, and to get themselves far more acclimatized for the nervous start. So the Toronto Bay on the, on the 13 players are going to uh, go across to their supporters on the green stand and just perhaps say thank you very much for supporting. And they as well have gotten some of their nervous energies out in this game. And we can expect fireworks in the next match. So a jubilation on that side with the spectators as well applauding their young charges. And if you can have a white shot, you'll see how the Guyanese supporters not pleased at all. But why not? You must be very happy, not only for your side, but for the fact that a bilateral series, a goodwill series has started at this level, the developmental level. Where at this stage, all you can do is learn, learn, and get better. That's correct, John. And it's very good to start with a win. It feels good to start with a win. So I can understand the jubilation there among the youngsters. But now it's not lost for Guyana. This is just one attempt of four. 
And I know they'll become better and they'll put their foot forward. I really like the look of Henry. Very impressive start. Latif as well. The fast bowlers, they're going to get it together. Ghana need to focus on their batting. And that's going to get better too as the series goes. All right, so we look forward to some more action on Tuesday. We're permitting. We look forward to your company as well. My name is John Ramsing on behalf of Ian Bascom, Sean Messiah, Inderjit Prasad. Those are the guys on air. Technically, Andrew Singh, Sunil Ramlal, and Ronaldo McGarrell. Thank you for your company. And here's an invitation for you to join us on Tuesday from 10 hours right here at Providence and right here on this channel in terms of streaming. Until then, bye-bye.